opening for ice hockey. So all team sports have this alternating nature where they sprint really hard for a short period of time, and then you have a lot of downtime after that to recover from. In basketball, you might drive to the net real hard, but then you're pretty much just jogging back down the court. In football, you're going really hard for a six-second play, and then you're resting about 30 seconds between plays. In hockey, hockey is, is the same, but it's different. So hockey is a little bit more glycolytic. And I guess this is a, a good time to mention that this video, I'm going to kind of assume that you understand some of these basic energy systems terms. If you don't, make sure you watch Brandon Brown's video on basic bioenergetics. And then if you want a, a little bit more of a the science behind what we're talking about today, check out his new video, the acute responses to training video. Essentially, your body does all this stuff to make sure that you can continue exercising. It's really cool. And we're going to kind of apply it today. <clears throat> so hockey is different than other team sports. As we said, it's more glycolytic. So it's a little bit more anaerobic. It's going to cause more fatigue. It's going to cause more performance decrement just by the nature of the game. A big component of this is your shift duration. So if you try to go hard for a minute, you're going to gas out a lot quicker than if you try to go hard for 30 second shifts. Rest 60 seconds between and then go back out for 30 seconds. <clears throat> uh, big thing with hockey also is that during the shift, if I, if I need to win a battle, I'm going to skate really hard, I'm going to win that battle, I'm going to chip the puck away, and then when I go coast to find my next spot, I don't lose that momentum nearly as quickly as I would lose it in some sort of running game, right? Because I'm just gliding on an almost frictionless ice surface. So I'm going to get to my next action spot quicker, and I have less downtime during the shift. So all this stuff comes into play. How do we condition for hockey? Well, I think one thing that we really need to focus on, and what I want to talk about today, is the anaerobic threshold. So how can I output power without gassing out? So anaerobic threshold, how are we going to measure this? Well, stress test we talked about, we can measure that. But the issue with the stress test is that the stress test is time intensive, it's human labor intensive, and it's expensive. I, like, I don't want to, if, if you have an unlimited budget, then go ahead and do that or buy your own gas chamber, exercise, mask, machine. You can do that if you want. But what I would suggest doing is doing a modified Cooper test. So the Cooper test is a 12-minute run as long as you can go. It was developed for the military as a measure of their fitness. There's a there's like an alternative version where you run a mile and a half as quickly as you can, similar kind of thing. So we're seeing how how much power you can output at aerobic or pushing the the uh, aerobic section of your um, heart rates or just activity levels. <clears throat> so the modified Cooper test, what we do. Now, the original Cooper test was done as a run, and I've been talking about this modified Cooper test as a run as well. But for hockey, I don't really think running is that appropriate because exercise is very specific. So I think a really good example of this is Lance Armstrong raced bicycles, and he was really good at it. And then he ran the Boston Marathon, and he did not do very well. Right, So why didn't if he wins the Tour de France all the time, why didn't he win the Boston Marathon? There is the potential that maybe he was doping a little bit less for the Boston Marathon because it's a little less important to his lifestyle. Um, but also, simply his running movement is not nearly as efficient as his cycling movement. He cycles a lot more. So there's this efficiency of movement and there's also this just general specificity of the, the motor pattern in your head. 
right? For, so for a hockey player, ideally what I'm doing is I'm giving you a heart rate monitor and I'm putting you on the ice and I'm telling you to go as far, take as many laps as you can in six minutes, okay? And I'm just gonna measure laps and maybe I'll count the last lap. If maybe you go halfway around, I'll count that as a half and we can estimate quarters or whatever. Um, so ideal for hockey players, most specific, stay on the ice. But ice time is expensive. So if you don't have extra ice time to measure this, or you don't have the ability to measure this in full gear or whatever, you don't have this in your facility, I think a good and probably the best alternative for hockey players is a uh, bicycle test. So sit on a stationary bike and measure how far you go. That's crucial. You're going to need some sort of electronic to measure how far you're going unless you want to film it and count it all. Uh, I would not recommend that because you're not measuring how hard you're pushing in the pedals. You'll see the bike in the video that we shot measures calories, calories burned, whatever that means. I don't know that I would, I mean, I wouldn't say that that's probably very accurate in terms of how many calories that I've burned, but I think it is accurate relative to itself on how much power is being output into the bike because that's how it's measuring that calorie output. So that's what I used in this video. You can also use, I think the, the bike that we have also measures distance traveled. Distance traveled is good. Treadmills, it's super easy. You just hit the six minutes and it counts the, uh, the uh, distance you've traveled throughout there. You can tell them to push it as hard as they want or go down as low as they want if they start to gas out. That's totally fine. That's the way I normally do it. <clears throat> now, another way that you could go about testing this is just say, hey, I'm going to tell you to run at seven miles an hour for six minutes, and I want to see how you respond. And then you can only measure their heart rate. Instead of trying to mess with all the power output stuff, you can just measure their heart rate and see, is it after training, it should be lower. So is it lower? That means if, if their heart rate is lower after training, that means that they're working at a lower intensity relative to their capacity, meaning you've given them more capacity with your training. <clears throat> All this stuff is good, and we talked about the one minute on, one minute off, repeats, maybe four rounds, maybe three rounds of that. I could do two minutes on, two minutes off, three minutes on, three minutes off trying to push up this anaerobic threshold afterwards. But before we, you know, talk too much about the training application of this, I want to show you the test actually. So let's, uh, let's cut over to that video right now. Okay guys, I brought Tony in to run my test for me. We've got the whiteboard set up, so we're going to measure my heart rate at 30 second intervals, and then we'll take an average at the end. And we are going to measure my total calories burned according to this machine. We're going to go for six minutes, so I'll dial this down. Okay, I'm going to dial it to seven and then start. I'm going to start warming up, right? I've already done my warm up, I've already gotten going. Um, Brandon's going to help film the rest of this, and I'm going to hand this camera off to Tony, and we'll get going. So, my butt's still cramping. Uh, we did the math surprisingly quickly. I guess it takes three of us, but Tony measured from 20 seconds to 30 seconds to get 144. Whatever number he counted for 10 seconds, he just multiplies by 6 to get the beats per minute. And that ended up being 144. Uh, the, the range for me is a little bit wider than I would have hoped, which means I probably dogged it initially and tried too hard at the end, um, saving a little bit of power output that I could potentially have. Um, but that's the test. Simple as that. Lots of ways you can tweak that. Hopefully this gives you some, some help when you're training your hockey players or, you know, the dirty secret is this would work with any other athlete. Um, give that a shot. Let me know what questions you have. Uh, I'd love to discuss this further. The energy system stuff is really interesting to me. Um, thank you for watching. Again, 
participate in the Facebook group. That's only for you guys. Um, if you like this, send it over to someone and they'll check out the free version of the post or any other posts that you might see. Uh, as a small business, we really appreciate the kind words that we've been getting from people. So again, thank you.